Apple Watch pre-orders begin, the FAA gives Amazon a drone boost, and GoDaddy's post-IPO purchase. It's Friday, April 10th, and this is Crunch Report. Apple's new Apple Watch went live for pre-orders at midnight Pacific time. Did you stay up? I didn't. With in-store pickup or home delivery set for April 24th. That is, if you were in the first batch of pre-orders because, as is very common with Apple products, shipping dates have already slipped to June for some models of Apple Watch. Although Apple hasn't disclosed the numbers of units that it's offering, so it's hard to say if this is a limited supply problem or a huge demand problem or both, which would be a pretty good problem indeed. There are a total of 38 different models of the Apple Watch to choose from in Apple's online stores in nine countries, Australia, Canada, China, France, Germany, Hong Kong, Japan, the UK, and of course, the US. Apple first confirmed that it was making a smartwatch in a September 2014 event, saying that the wearable would be available early next year. But if you haven't ordered one yet, that's more like summer. Remember the story about the fake Tinder profile of a woman named Ava? It made the rounds at South by Southwest. She, she was actually having conversations with matches, but she wasn't a single woman at all. Her questions were just a marketing stunt for a science fiction movie. A lot of hearts were broken in Texas that weekend. Well, the movie, Ex Machina, opens today and stars Ava, who's actually a character in the movie. She's a robot that struggles with the consciousness of artificial intelligence, or lack thereof. TechCrunch's Anthony Ha got a chance to interview Alicia Vikander, that's the actress who plays Ava, and Oscar Isaac, who plays Ava's inventor, to talk about the making of the film and AI in general. Isaac's character plays the founder of a fictional search engine company called Blue Book, but but he says he isn't playing a version of, say, Mark Zuckerberg, but more of a darker genius outside of technology, more along the lines of chess champion Bobby Fischer. Ex Machina opens in theaters today. Web hosting and service provider GoDaddy went public with its IPO on April 1st, and today it's closed on an acquisition of Elto. Elto is a startup that connects business owners and other non-technical people to developers who can help them build and improve their web presences. Terms of the deal were not disclosed. Elto's been around a while. It was founded in 2012. It was originally called Tweaky, I think Elto is probably better. And at the time of the acquisition had 25,000 customers who were paying for its services, either by getting ballpark prices for products from project managers or choosing one of a couple of hundred fixed price services that Elto offered. GoDaddy has 12 million small business owners, which is a majority of its total customer base of 13 million. So this makes a lot of sense. Elto will be gradually transitioned to become part of the company's premium model called GoDaddy Pro, which is currently still in beta and designed to help web professionals make more money and save more time. The Federal Aviation Administration has cleared Amazon to test its current drone designs after previously already approving Amazon's petition back in July of last year to test drones last month. But because the company's drone design changed pretty significantly since it first logged an application, it needed to be approved again because sometimes things get caught up in government. The details of Amazon's home-built drone remains confidential, so we don't really know what exactly it asked the FAA for, but we do know that the FAA's rules include restrictions on drones to 55 pounds or less, speeds up to 100 miles per hour, and flight levels up to 400 feet above ground. The drone must always remain within line of sight of the pilot, so it's really not a long distance solution, at least not under current regulations. Amazon has also been granted a slightly lower license requirement for drones pilots. A private pilot license is no longer required. A recreational or sport pilot license will work too. Both licenses have more restrictions if a pilot would be flying a regular single engine plane rather than a drone, but they're cheaper and they don't involve medical exams, which the private pilot license does. Can we talk about watches again? Okay, why not? Not the Apple Watch, don't worry, We're, who cares about that? But a DIY watch based on Apple's 1977 era personal computer, the Apple II. Yeah, I thought you'd like this. Instructables user by the name of Aliator777 gets the creative prize of the week here on Crunch Report because he built an Apple II themed watch. It took him about a month 
with a 3D printer and some handy engineering and a lot of love. It includes a microcontroller, a 1.8 inch LCD screen, a rechargeable battery, and a little tiny two watt speaker for sound effects. And true to original design, it even has a floppy drive for tiny little floppy disks but they don't actually work, it's just for show. Don't get too excited. It does have a rotary knob for navigation and input though. So if you're wishing that, ah, oh, you'd really, really should have thought of that yourself, Aliator777 is a cool dude and also released a step-by-step -step guide along with all of the files and the software that he used required to build your own. Before we go, just a reminder that TechCrunch Disrupt New York is happening on May 4th. It runs through May 6th in New York City. And if you want to join us, you still have early bird pricing, but not for much longer. Tickets at 9 p.m. Pacific time tonight will go up by $1,000. So buy them now while you still can and save some vacation money. And that's the report for this week. I'm Sarah Lane. Crunch Report airs Monday through Friday at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific, right here on TechCrunch.com. And we'll see you Monday.